really are what I envision the person being behind the shade room. Like if I had to envision it, it would be your personality. Yeah, because um, you know, I'm a black woman. The shade room is primarily black women. And um, like I said earlier, like it's you, nobody can talk to us like we can talk to us. And so it's just, I'm a reflection of the community, honestly. Nah, you really are. Okay, so I want to start off, and what I try to do with this show, typically our audience are people who want to become entrepreneurs, people who just want more out of life. So I try to bring um, really successful individuals to the table or just all around inspiring people to the table, but didn't start off under the best circumstances. You're no exception to that rule. You weren't born with a silver spoon in your mouth. You're Nigerian, correct? I am. I'm first generation Nigerian American. So my both of my parents are immigrants from Nigeria. Yeah. What what um now were you born here in the States? I was born here, but my sister, one of my sisters was um born in Nigeria. But yeah, I was born here in the nineties. Okay. Yeah. I read, don't know how true it is, and you know, even before we go into it, it, it again, it's just to really establish that you come from humble beginnings. Mm -hmm. is, it, is it accurate that your dad killed your mom when you were very young? Yes. So talking about that Nigerian immigrant thing, my parents came over here um, for a better life. And my mother ended up seeing success in America in the sense that she was a nurse and she was just rising in the ranks as a nurse. Um, and my father had a harder time integrating into society and getting a job and things of that nature and you uh, you know the Nigerian culture a lot of times is such a pressure on the man to be like the provider and things of that nature mm -hmm. um, and so that was the dynamic between my mother was a breadwinner and she, they also had five daughters mm -hmm. um, and so the financial burden that was on my mother was heavy um, and so that caused issues in yeah, my mother was a victim of domestic violence and my father was did become extremely abusive um, until the day that he did kill my kill our mom, yes. And, I, and, and we were in the house that day. Um, and it's crazy because he's actually on parole. He, he's up for parole um, this September. Yeah, but um, that's definitely my story for sure. Wow, wow. Okay, Can, I, I want to dive into that a little bit deeper before we move forward. You mm -hmm. said you and your sisters were in the home when this happened? Yes. So um, we were often in the home whenever there was like some domestic violence happening between our parents. And oftentimes we were the ones that would step in and, you know, break up the fight. And they'll be like, okay, the kids are here. You know what I mean? And so it was very effective. And that day we happened to all be except for one sister who did witness a little bit of it, but the majority of us were asleep mm -hmm. and nothing was waking us up. My sister tried to wake us up. I mean, we were just deep asleep and it was, it was God crazy. God protected y'all. Oh yeah. I, I definitely see it as God. Cause it was, it was it, it, the reason why it was so miraculous is because everyone else in the apartment complex heard, heard things, but we were in the actual apartment and could not wake up. Are you serious? And, Yes, no, I'm very serious. Um, it was something that I, we, it was something I had to accept because it's easy to feel guilty that you didn't wake yep. up, but then I realized that it was God's protection because my father at that, that night was not in his right state of mind. And no, we don't know what could have happened if we had woke up and tried to get in the middle of it. And so um, I definitely see that as God's protection now that I look back on it, but yeah. At the, at the time, were you and your sister daddy's girls or was it friction even between you guys and your dad? We were daddy's girls because our mom was the breadwinner. So she would actually be working in the morning and night. Um, she just had the burden of, you know, bringing in all the money. And so the person who was home with us, who was typically unemployed most of the time, was our father. So we loved our mother and I, and I love my mother more, I would say, but it was that our father was the one taking us to school, picking mm -hmm. us up. You know, he was the one that- So you know, knew this man. It was not like your dad was not around. No, 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 he was in the house. He was around. He wow. just was not a contributor financially um, and his shame of that, you know what I mean? And then also his, his, con his resentment for having all girls, knowing that, you know, he wanted to, in Nigerian culture, it's even more, it's even more important to have a man, 
you know what I mean? Like a son that, uh-huh. that that's that's really big. Um, and so just all those things um, ate at the marriage and caused resentment and abuse and you know, it just was an unhealthy relationship for sure. Wow, wow. Before I move on, have you or any of your sisters maintained a relationship with him while he's been incarcerated? So it's crazy that you said that because I recently reached out to him. Um, I was writing a film. After how many years, my, may I ask? Oh, it was recent. It was um, 2018. No, I'm saying think- after how many years of not reaching out to him? Oh, ever since I was six. And I'm 30 now. Yeah, wow. so it was just when I was 28 that I decided to reach out to him. Um, and, you know, my father, you know, I, you know, I, it's just not a, a healthy relationship. And so I think that he's not all the way in his right state of mind. I think ever since that day, it kind of, he might have some mental health issues. I'm not really sure. But I think um, for me, it's just not a healthy relationship. So I've kind of accepted that, you mm-hmm. know, that that's what it is and realized that I had to kind of maintain and protect my peace in that situation. So mm-hmm. even to this day, wow. Mm-hmm. Okay, your first generation here in the States. I'm assuming mm-hmm. you do not have much family here. What happens to you and your sisters? So we, we ended up going into foster care. Um, it wasn't, we didn't have much family here, that's the case. But mm-hmm. when we were taken into um, uh, the courts to kind of determine who we would be with, mm-hmm. our family in Nigeria did want to take us. Okay. But we didn't want to go to Nigeria <laughs> at the time. We were like, well, we can't stay in the States. We want to <laughs> stay right and so it was that reason why we went into foster care because we didn't want to go to Nigeria um and so you know you're six years old at the time you and your I gotta believe your sisters were at best a few years older than you huh they were between between the ages of one and twelve so we so you guys get to to have a say so and where you go yeah they asked you you know where you want to go and you have to understand my dad you know you know the relationship with sometimes spouses and uh father-in-laws and mother-in-laws you know what I mean so he had already he had already demonized my mom's uh, (laughs) you know family and so we were like we're not trying to go over there with the people that you know our dad said were the evil people (laughs) you know what I mean so we we want to go we want to go here. We want to go. Uh, we want to be here. And they did give us that voice. And so they put us into care, which was a journey in itself. I mean, uh-huh. at first, we all went into care together. It was five of us. So it's hard to find people who want to take in five girls, especially Absolutely. at the age of 12, six, eight, you know what I mean, nine. Um, and so, um, you know, we, we initially were in a house together and then over time began to split up and, um, me and my younger sister and my the one the sister right above me we stayed together but we definitely split up from our other two sisters you know going through the foster care system going through a traumatic experience like that have all of you guys remained close or has there become friction between the sisters we're close actually we talk all the time all five Um, yeah wow all five of us um we're all we had that's why you know what i mean and so we we definitely are close What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.